to avoid the new thinking of Copernicus, that the sun is the center and the earth moves around it once a year and turns on itself once a day. To keep the old thinking of Ptolemy, earth at the center, you need this complicated system of interlocking spheres and gears. It seems a madness to us. And yet, systems evolve. And evolution, we know, is not always reasonable or even tidy. The strain on reason of holding up an Earth-centered universe was beginning to show. Simple, isn't it? Well, to us, yes. But then, it was revolutionary. All the song and dance about numbers and positions of planets really comes down to this reasonable system. Like Galileo's work on motion, it hangs together. But presume the Earth is the center, and not the Sun. Then this is what the planets have to do to satisfy the senses as seen from Earth. Well, you can see the gyrations they have to make. Why would God do it this way? asked Galileo. Well, God's church had that well-known parental answer. Because we say so. The conceived order included a kind of an ecclesiastical geography in which hell was in the bowels of the earth. You could see the brimstone and fire spurting up occasionally in volcanoes. And then you went out through the spheres of the heavens and beyond that was God and heaven. And moving to a Copernican system was a great threat to this kind of sacred geography, uh, which was tacitly accepted, but wasn't really, honestly, part of Scripture. And this was a threat to the whole doctrinal basis of the Church's teaching on the sacraments, on the nature of the Church itself. And so it was a philosophical issue. If, if Copernicanism won out, the Church felt Aristotelianism was going to go, and therefore the basis of their doctrinal statements is going to go. It's very strange because many people feel that if they give up a literal belief in one point, it's going to undermine the whole thing. And frankly, I think you have to approach scriptures in a much more thoughtful way. That's what Galileo was prepared to do. He said, God has made the book of scripture and the book of nature, and they shouldn't be contradicting each other. In 1611, he is first mentioned by the Inquisition. 1614. In Florence, there is a rabble-rousing sermon against him by Tommaso Caccini of the Dominicans, the guard dogs of church dogma. Sixteen fifteen, Rome, the center. Another priest, Lorini, scuttles to the Inquisition with a formal complaint over Galileo's Copernican views. Now the Church's instrument against heresy can act, if it chooses. 